بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد أحبت في الله الله سبحانه وتعالى says في كتابه الكريم لقد بعثنا في كل أمة رسول نعبد الله واجتنبوا تاغوت So in this ayah karima ya ahabat of Allah ولقد بعثنا في كل أمة رسول نعبد الله واجتنبوا تاغوت Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, I've sent to every nation a messenger to worship Allah alone and avoid those things worshipped besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And ta'ud is a comprehensive term. And that denotes anything which is worshipped besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and receives pleasure or wishes for others to worship them. So, for example, that can be, of course, like Fir'aun and others who wish for people to praise them and worship them and give them devotion and adoration that only belongs to the creator of the heavens and earth, Tabarak wa Ta'ala. And so what we learn from this ayah is a when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَكَدْ بَعَثْنَ فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ رُسُولٍ إِنْ نَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and we send to every nation a messenger to worship Allah alone. So that means first, أَحَبَتِ فِي اللَّهِ We see that all messengers, all prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they were all sent with this primary message this primary goal, which is Tawheed. Tawheed, especially Tawheed al-Ibadah. Tawheed of worship. And we know that it's Tawheed of worship that's being emphasized here because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَكَدْ بَعَثْنَ فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ رُسُولٍ إِن نَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ He sent every messenger to do what? To worship Allah alone. So that means the primary focus was worship. So this shows us this is the Tawheed of worship. Tawheed al-Ibadah or Tawheed al-Uluhiyah. That, that the example of all the prophets, alayhim afdal salatu wasalam, their example and their message to their peoples was to bring people from dhulumat al nur from darkness to light, by calling them back to the worship of the one who created everything, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that no partners should be associated with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that comes to the third benefit we gain from this ayah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, to avoid or free yourself from to be far away from, ijtinab, to be away from any and all forms of polytheism. A part of that worship was freeing oneself from all polytheism. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this ayat is showing us that the message that was given to the messengers comprised, like in the ayat, comprises of two things. Al nafi will ifbat. Al nafi will ifbat. Which means a nafi is a negation. And ifbat is to affirm something. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala began with a, 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 a thabat, a, the affirmation, and then a nafi, the negation. What is that if what is that ifbat Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning in this ayat, is affirming in this ayat? to worship him and him alone. That every messenger 
was sent with Tawheed, and the primary focus was to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. That's if bad. That's, you're affirming Tawheed, you're affirm, affirming worship belongs only to Allah. The negation, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is negating all forms of polytheism. Because he says, which tanibu ta'ud, freeing themselves and calling the people to free themselves from polytheism, from ta'ud, in all of its various forms. So it shows us that there's an affirmation, the ayah began with an affirmation, and then a negation. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil.